Hello children, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I am discussing with you regarding absorption and assimilation of food. We have already discussed about digestion of food in previous Children you know if we eat food, digestion is one part but unless we absorb it, unless our body assimilates it, the purpose of eating food will not be served. So once we eat any kind of food, it will be digested if we have enzymes in proper proportions. But once digestion is over, absorption is must. Unless we absorb it, we won't get the nutrients for which we are eating the food. So coming to absorption, absorption is the process by which the end products of digestion pass through the intestinal mucosa into the blood or lymph. If I say blood or lymph, what do I mean by this? Children, you know that certain things can be absorbed by blood, that is like protein, like carbohydrates, end products of protein and end products of carbohydrates. But fats can be reabsorbed only by lymph, that means end products of fats will be absorbed by lymph. So absorption which mainly takes place in a small intestine mucosa, the intestinal mucosa or villi mucosa, that will be by blood and lymph. That is how the absorbed food will reach either blood or lymph and finally the body tissues. It is now carried to different parts of the body and where it will facilitate transport of other systems, other mechanisms and the end part of this will be giving energy for day to day work. We know that absorbed food through blood or lymph will finally reach the cell and oxygen through respiration again through blood will reach the cell and this oxygen will burn this food in the cell and will give you energy ATP. So unless absorbed food reaches cell the purpose is not served. So this is called absorption which is very very important. Now I should also tell you a fact about absorption. How absorption is taking place? It is not as simple as we feel or as it looks like. Transport of water will be as per osmotic gradient. Transport of amino acids, glucose, electrolytes will also be as per osmotic gradient. Whereas fatty acids and glycerol which are end products of fats will be absorbed through chylomicrons. Coming to some more facts about absorption. Absorption can be by simple diffusion, it can be by osmosis, it can be against concentration gradient and if it is against concentration gradient in that case energy is required. Body has to give energy to absorb it or it can be a co-transport along with some other substance, one particular substance is transported or absorbed. So for various ions, for various end products, we follow various kinds of transport mechanisms but in the end, all the end products of nutrients will be reabsorbed mainly in the small intestine. So far. I was talking about absorption in relation to small intestine. Of course, small intestine is the part of elementary canal where absorption is the main work. But absorption takes place in other parts of elementary canal as well. It takes place in mouth, stomach, intestine that is small intestine, large intestine. Of course, the maximum absorption is in the small intestine. Now I will give some details about what is absorbed in which part of elementary canal. Coming to details of absorption, mouth, certain drugs are absorbed right in the mouth. You must have seen some heart patients putting tablet under the tongue, the absorption is taking place right in the mouth. Similarly some other medicines also. So absorption begins in the mouth itself for certain drugs 
But coming to other things like water, stomach is an area where water will be reabsorbed, simple sugars will be reabsorbed and alcohol will be reabsorbed. Here I would like to give emphasis to water and alcohol. If I say water is primarily absorbed in stomach, what do I mean by this children? You must have heard people saying, don't drink water along with eating of food or drink before eating food or drink after eating food, all those things you must have heard. Now let me tell you details behind all these statements. If you take water before food or just in between sometimes, not during eating otherwise, then it is absorbed in the stomach. But if you are taking water when you are eating food, then also it will be absorbed but not in the stomach because now water is mixed with the food. It will reach a small intestine along with the food and when food is reabsorbed in the small intestine along with the food it will be absorbed there. So whatever water you drink it will be absorbed but if it is only water not food then it is absorbed early that is only in the stomach. But if you are taking water along with the food, then it remains in your alimentary canal for longer period and it will be absorbed when it reaches small intestine. That means you will feel little heavier in the alimentary canal for some time, but it is not going to cause any harm to you or to alimentary canal and water absorption will also take place. So that is the difference between taking water before food and taking water along with the food. But if you feel thirsty, you must drink water. Your body needs it. More water you drink, better it is for your body, for your kidneys. So, if you are not able to follow that I should not drink water along with the food, if you are not able to follow this, then you can drink whenever you want. I have told you the difference in absorption, otherwise there is no other difference. Coming to alcohol, we all know drinking alcohol is bad, it is injurious, it harms our body, it harms our tissues, but still some people drink alcohol. Now the facts regarding alcohol is that it is absorbed in the stomach. That means it was not absorbed in the mouth. That also means it was not absorbed in esophagus. And this will also mean that it was not absorbed at the entry site of the stomach. That means in these three areas, mouth, esophagus, entry of stomach, the entry point of stomach, in these areas alcohol was alcohol and it will damage tissues in these areas directly. After reaching stomach, it is absorbed by blood and now it will reach different parts of the body, also liver, also heart and now it will start damaging other tissues like liver, like kidneys like heart. So damaging effect of alcohol as alcohol directly will be in mouth, in esophagus, beginning of stomach and after it is absorbed in stomach then injurious things will come to liver, kidney, heart and other parts of the body. So directly as well as indirectly it is injurious. You must have seen or heard that those who drink alcohol too much they have ulcer in the mouth, they have cancer in the throat or they have uh, some problem with the entry point of the stomach. It is for this reason that alcohol is moving as pure alcohol in these three areas. Coming to small intestine, we know that small intestine is the place where maximum absorption activities will take place. Glucose, fructose, fatty acids, glycerol and amino acids. Children, you know that glucose and fructose are the end products of carbohydrates. Fatty acids and glycerol are end products of fats and amino acids are the end products of proteins. All these main end products are absorbed in a small intestine. The surface area is too large and absorption is very simple. Coming to large intestine or colon, of course, in large intestine, the food which reaches is after digestion has taken place, after absorption has taken place. So what can be absorbed from here? 
some water, some minerals and some drugs. Whenever you eat any medicine, that is a problem with medicine. It starts getting absorbed right from mouth, then stomach, then small intestine and even in the large intestine because any drug or any medicine is not part of our food. So, system is definitely disturbed, but if you are unwell or you have some problem in the body, you have to take medicine, but otherwise one should not go for any drugs just because you are having mood to have something. So, drugs are difficult for our elementary canal. Let me now talk about assimilation. Now, absorbed substances finally reach the tissues which utilize them for their activities. In fact, this is a process which is called assimilation. We are doing everything for this process finally. We eat food, we digest it, we absorb it. Why we are doing this? To assimilate it. Unless we are able to use the digested absorbed food in the body as per assimilation, the purpose is not served. Because it is through assimilation, the food is converted to our body energy or the food which we eat, suppose protein we eat, it is converted to our body protein. The carbohydrates which we eat, it is converted to our biological energy. Of fats which we eat, it is converted to our stored fat and you know stored fat is also very important. Of course, being obese is not good, but not having any fat stored is also not good. Children, you are aware of the fact that first source of energy is carbohydrate in our body, in other words glucose. That is why if you take any carbohydrate rich food, you get instant energy and this is also the reason why we have to take either rice or wheat in our staple diet. You can't feel contented and satisfied only by eating proteins or only by eating fats. So, carbohydrate or starch rich food is the energy giving food and that is the first source of energy. You come to the class, you come to the school, you are studying, reading, giving tests, doing assignments, all these energy or you are going to playground, playing, having walk in the field, anything which you do, it needs day to day energy and that is provided by carbohydrate. That means first source of energy is not protein. That also means first source of energy is not fat. Then what is happening to our protein food and the fat rich food? That is also needed in the body in some amount. So, I have already explained now that why carbohydrates and starch in form of wheat and rice are important for us and why protein is also important because when you eat protein it is converted to its raw material amino acids and then body will reform protein from these raw material amino acids and now this protein will be part of your muscle protein. So, your muscle mass in the body is due to this protein mass that is why it is said that if somebody is obese and wants to reduce weight, you should reduce on fat content and not on protein content. You should reduce your fat mass and not the protein mass. So, proteins are important for our protein mass. Coming to fat, fat is stored as a fixed deposit kind of thing. When carbohydrates are not able to provide energy or our body is not able to use carbohydrates for energy like diabetic. In that case, fats will start burning and giving energy so that the person does not die. So, first source of energy is carbohydrate, second is fat and last is protein, but turn of protein will never come for various reasons. The last part of elementary canal that is large intestine and rectum are involved with the process of defecation. The food after digestion, after absorption, after assimilation, whatever is left that is converted to feces and this will be thrown out through anus in the form of fecal matter, the process called defecation. With this we come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.